Hello, and you're watching Benga live. No, I'm joking. Um, I'm here to show you what I do with my dubstep music. It, it's, it's a new genre. It's, it's a mix between like, I don't know. Let's not get into that. Let me just show you what I do. The way I work, I've always had like, I've always had like a projects folder. Because I work with two pro programs, I have like all the save files and all the loops and everything that I've used and all the drum patterns that I've made. So, so I'm just about to bring that up in my loops as well. Most probably in this song, I probably would have started with the lead, which is this. I'm going to solo it so you can hear it. the lead from pleasure on its own. I used Albino to create this. This is most probably a preset. Sometimes I, I go through, I have something in my head and I'll just, I'll go in and I'll make the sound, which I'll, I'll show you a bit later, like how I'll go about making some noises and stuff. I'm not one to sample drums, so I've got loads of packs. And here we go. I'll start my riffs off like. I always make, I always make a riff so it, it, you can you can listen to the riff on its own, sort of thing. So I'll have. This will be the whole riff like of the hi hats. Also get. There's always a lot, quite a lot of percussion in my song, so that's to say, shakers. Probably wouldn't notice them when they're all together, but there's a lot of like shaker riffs in them. Kick patterns. The top of the kick. And then I've got them in. Whoa. Uh, snooze. And I always use like different snares to make up one snare, like the body from one snare, top from another. And I I never really mix in FR Studio, I bring everything over to Logic as order. And I've got as you can see, all my audio riffs are like one bar audio riffs, but then I'll create a couple of different variations on patterns in Fruit Loops. Then I'll move it onto Logic, and then I'll, where I see fit to bring in kicks, like sometimes I'll start with less kicks at the first 16 and then bring them in later. But here we go, I'm gonna show you how I mix in my, in my Logic, like my kick. I'll start off, I'll bring the kick in, I'll bring in one sound at a time and I'll just I'll mix it on its own sort of thing straight away. I don't wait till the end to get in a mix from scratch. It's almost like I mix as I go along. So I'll get my kick. And this is how my kick will start. This is the kick without nothing on top of it. No effects, no EQs. Then. Low 
don't cut on the top, it's more for automation purposes. Okay, okay. That's it. Then. I've got a parametric EQ. I normally use a, a fat EQ, but a parametric is when I'm going in for something that precise on the kick button. Like, it's not it's not really like I want all my kicks to sound the same, but there's certain things I think don't need to be there. So I'll start EQing, I'll start getting my parametric out. As you can see, it's not as bright as it was before. That's another low cut for automation purposes. I'm doing a parametric. And I think I use an envelope because things that sound slightly live. So I, I try and get rid of that all the time. Like my mixes sound really dry. I'll bring things in and I'll bring in my snare comes in and if you're looking at my screen you can be thinking where's the reverb on the snare I use bush channels like I'll get I'll have a reverb like low cut stereo boxes excitors I always have like I always set like my reverb on the, ch the bus channel one. I always set like a tape delay on bus channel two and stuff like that. Then it's ready for me to carry on and I'll have like a fatty cue on my snare. I'm always like getting rid of things that don't need to be in things. And then see how I move along. This is what it will sound like on its own. low cut, maybe you might not hear it, but it's like little rumbles and things and I'm always low cutting. I can't rub that into people enough how much I low cut and low pass. Some things you're looking at my, my computer but they're for all motion purposes. I get stereo from different things, I use choruses, I use I use um, stereo delay, stereo, those are little things I use. More than mixing as I go along is, the, is, a, is a big part of how I make tunes because I see when I go to mix something at the end, I get I almost I almost don't get the feel of the track for a mix, so I'm always bringing things in one by one. Or sometimes, like as I'm building the track, I might have just built this on its own. Instead of bringing everything in separately, I'll have like, let me just erase this. Don't worry, it's all saved, it's all saved. <laughs> and I'll have this, let me find the, the project file. And I'll have just the, the beat, if I can find it. I'll have the whole beat, just so I can create other things around it and get everything finished, so I'll have, I'd have four bars and I'll start creating. I'd have like a bass line, which my main bass machine is Trilogy. Even if I use an Albino for a mid range bass, I still will low pass it and then have a Trilogy as my sub bass. Because I like the way I can control it, sort of thing. I'm not saying that's everyone's style of thing, but that's. That's my preference. Which is the bass line. Um, another thing to do with my music is there's a lot of automation going on. I'd say like, for those that don't know how automation works, this is an empty track about automation and then once I get my automation out, I can automate every single EQ that I've put on the track and I can automate all the oscillators, I can also automate what goes on in Albino. Some people, they like to do things as they go along, like they, they use touch, where you, um, everything you touch while you're, you're making a song, it records it to the part where you're, where you're obviously making it. So I'll show you like a little example of how things work when you're in touch. 
is almost like a high cut that to to explain it almost not so technically but it, what it does is it it almost brightens up your sound takes the brightness off and in and out and almost it's almost like it's a lot of it's a mixture of things cut off is and um i'll show you what touch has done there anyway let's go back to the read where i would I'd normally draw that in. You can see what it's all doing and play it. That's a prob that's probably that's probably more interesting way to automate what you do if you use touch. But I'm I'm more everything has to be really smooth. I don't really like jagged little endings and things like that. So I'm more I draw things in. I use my mouse and I will make things like this. You can hear it in the intro of Pleasure if you if I play the whole song. You can see how I've drawn it in. <laughs> things that's going on and think you don't need that much to mix the sound but a lot of it's put there for automation like the automation you just heard of that lead getting brought in if you look you can see what I've done I've just planted a, a 28 hertz on the high cut at the bottom on the 17 17th bar sorry and brought it back brought it up to 2000 which is like you would say the limit of what people can hear stand. I think I've told the people enough about how I how I go about building the song, where it comes from, like where my drums will come from, how I get into the music. But then I think more people want to know about bass lines in it. So what I have is I have I have three oscillators. One of them is just a sine wave, just for the bass line. I'll play it on its own. And I have, I'll have two for the, the oscillator. I mean, two for the, the cutoff sync, for the cutoff to react on that, the mid-range range, bass, sorry. Which I'll have one which is at a different octave. It kind of makes the bass line stronger. You know, people split their bass lines so you can, so they can, um, they can control what it's doing. Like if it if they want it to be wide or whatever, I'm more I'm more do it in my albino where I've got my third oscillator, oscillator number two and number one, and then I will send the oscillator one and two to my filter one, which is what does the the cut off. I'll give you a little example. So say if I started a a fresh bass line. We can start from anywhere. I might just, I might open up a preset, and then how it starts is I, I use digital noises like the, the signs and the, the spectral waves and the saw bass, which is kind of like wave shapes. I set 
but um, the numbers on the side there are the, um, the octaves. I set it to where it needs to be, where I might be playing on my keyboard. Um, I set my cut off to where I want it to start. Then let's get to the LFOs. I set my LFO number two, maybe that's the next free one. The sync's at one four. The reset, because I'm one of them people, as I said before. I um, I then move on to what I want to modulate, and it's, it's most of the time, if you want to get the, the mid range wobble, you're going to go for a cut off filter, and I've set my cut off filter number one. This is a case of moving up and finding where I need it to be. And the reason why I have to keep pressing the note again is because I haven't got the release set properly. But I'll, I'll normally, not the release, like the decay and the sustain set properly, I'll normally do that afterwards because it's one of the things where I don't know where it, where it needs to be until I've played the riff. So like, let's say I get my riffs up. Get rid of this. Once again, it's saved, don't worry. And this is where the release comes into play because it keeps on dying too early, not the release, the decay and sustain. So, see where it dies really early? That all leads into each other. See where it kept on. It gets them like dropping, like the riff, the bass line, the oscillator will sound like it's dying. It's more to do with the decay and sustain and release. I think you already know that I'm talking, like I'm talking to amateurs. You know probably better than me. <laughs> so um, you see how I'm, I make the like the bass lines that I come up with. Now it's all once I've got all bass lines rolling, it's all mixing and. As you can, as you can see, I, as I told you before, I just go along, and most things are like, most things are already quite set. But then I'll go along and get little levels. I mix at different levels as well. So, I'll when I'm mixing like bass sounds, I'm mixing really loud. <laughs> Blow my speakers. But <laughs> when I'm mixing like tops, I I mix quite low, and I'll mix on one speaker. So I'll be like. Right, here we go. Let's get rid of the bass line. The reason why I mix tops really, really low is because I, I feel I can pick up on what's too low and what's too loud. So I mean, because. When it's loud, it all kind of all gets like muddled up when it comes to tops for me. So I mix really low. And most of the time, I'll have a lot of hats, but as you can see, I've got loads and loads of different hats in in pleasure. But I do do a little bit of mixing in fruit loops as I go along. I say if I open up a hat. <laughs> what I'm trying to show you is when I open up a hat, I automatically set it to a level. It's more like when I mix hats, I mix it kind of roundly, like I'll get them all together and then EQ little bits what I think shouldn't be there. But then when it comes to actually choosing the hats, and it's all just done really, really quickly. And when I when I bring it out, sorry, I export it as a as a wave file into my my projects, what I saved the stubborn and put up, and it will get saved. And then I already have because you, as I showed you before, I have the whole beat, and then so I know what comes up, I know where I've got to get my kick and my snare from. So I'd already have the box open as soon as I export it. Let's say if I call this, let's call this future music, you see what happens and how I go about getting it across the logic.
is bring it up and it's here I'm going to clang it up for you here is a clang <laughs> so you see what I do in him what I do for me is start mixing it in here as soon as I bring my things separately into my logic that's when I start mixing moving on from that I will I will then start finalising the song where I I don't really mix songs for for CD or vinyl I just try and get an in between I don't I say say I know like vinyls will lose a lot of tops when it cuts the vinyl I won't try and boost things to make things sound better on vinyl so it's more I um, get to the point where I put things through bus channels like I put everything through bus channel 9 if you look at my my kicks and my snares everything absolutely everything's through bus channel 9 Well, big producer here, we can all understand what I'm doing. So then I'll, I will get the overall mix level through the bus channels now. So you'll see everything going through number nine. If I need to bring it down, if anything's distorted, I'll bring it down through that. When people mix down their tunes, they, they, they know the end result, but then I, I know the end result to such like where I listen to my kick, I think to myself. Instead of like putting a massive EQ at the end of it and turning everything up, I kind of work that kick to be at that right level, and that sets the medium for the rest of the mix, sort of thing. If that's what I mean. Like, if my kick's EQ'd right and my snare's EQ'd right, it's at the right sort of brightness. I won't find myself coming to the end of the mix and turning the whole mix up, at, like making it brighter and stuff. If that's what I mean. But then, when it comes to the overall mix, I don't really do much much limiting, I do the limiting to a point so it doesn't go past zero but then if you notice where I bring my, all my buses to nine I've brought everything down so it doesn't distort anywhere so it's not like I'm pushing up really loud yeah. and then putting a limiter at the end of it it's more limiter so there's no surprises for the cutting engineers and that's where my vintage warmer comes into play say, yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> where it just stops everything from going mad so that's sat on the end of your mix just to, just to make sure yeah. there's nothing but I don't see it on the master. I, I've, I've just got like a phobia of things on the master, right. man. So that's just sitting on the group channel mm. rather than the... Yeah. So on the actual master out of your trap, there's nothing. Absolutely right. nothing. Yeah. I know some, like people that make house, they put an ad limiter. They, rather than using vintage warm or anything, they use ad limiters and stuff like on the master. Yeah. But um, then again, you're getting a really loud mix just from limiting. And when it comes to brick wall limiting, it's, it may seem louder to you, but it's not actually louder. When it comes to a club, it sounds a lot better, less limiting. What I'll do is once I've got my um, my main my, my main riffs, and that will normally be at at one, but then I'll move it to where I think I want to drop it. I'll I'll I I normally drop my tunes after sixteen bars. So I'll probably move it to to there most times. I'll move my my little four bar. <laughs> Looks dodgy how I've placed it, but um I'll move it to there and then I'll go about trying to create a, a melody over the top or saying some somehow how to intro. In this case we've got this. <laughs> The automation always comes last, so you wouldn't you wouldn't see the automation do this. I'll start off like that, and then I'll start placing bars around before I start automating things. I'll start I'll put a sixteen of that. It might drop with the melody like how it does here. It drops with the melody. It will drop with the bass line on my seventeen certain times. It's just how strong the melody is to the track. If it's really like punchy, the melody, then I'll keep it running through the, the drop and I'll drop it on 17. It's more about stripping it to parts where I look at, I look at it like as a DJ as well, sort of thing. So I'll, I'll be stripping the song down to, like, say, if I dropped it with the melody, I'm thinking about 
stripping things like that. Like, Place I'm going along. Everything's done in 16s as well. I don't really do mad off bar twos and fours. Basically, I'll start stripping things, so I'll take the melody there out. Now, to cut a long story short, I will take it out on the next 16, but I'm just taking it out so it's visible here. This ain't how the song normally sounds, but this is in the next 16. I strip out the melody. Then something else might come out, but then as I'm stripping things, I'm automating bass lines and I'm changing the way bass lines do things. But I also have the I have the Albino with the same settings but on a different sync rate and I might drop some of the notes down into that sync rate so I've got the same riff on a different audio channel and I might just think alright I want to lose that and I want to lose this these two and I want to lose the end one so I just Erase that. Whoa. So I can see what I've stripped. Turn that back on. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn them two back on. Turn them two off. Turn them two off. Turn it back on, sort of thing. And I get this effect. <laughs> Which keeps the song interesting. Um, you can see how I work through my songs. Well, how when I go about structuring, it's more about what the song's about. If the bass, if it's about the bass line, there's more automations on the bass line. If it's about the top line, like in Pleasure, there's more automations on the top line. And after I've gone through like structuring my song, I think about breakdowns. I more break things down when I think it. It's not necessary. Doesn't need. Doesn't need a break. But it could do with a break, sort of thing. Or, and I always have breakdowns in my songs, most of the time. It doesn't have to be the obvious down to no beats. It might be down to a different beat or sank mental. Just maybe that's down to the, maybe just down to the beat on its own or something. But I, I think it's necessary, necessary to do that. It's almost like, it's almost like starting it again. When it comes to endings, it's, I don't, I don't do it for DJs, man. Definitely don't do it for DJs because I don't, when I mix, I don't wait for songs to get to the end. They never get to the end. So I do mad things like I might set the drums out of sync and things like that. So if you sometimes mix some of my tunes, like some of the ones on the album, you'll just get lost. Twister is one of the ones where I set it out of sync and put mad delays on it. It's more, I always set my endings for CDs rather than vinyl. Right, so like I was I was explaining how when I drop my song, I drop it on a, I drop it after 16 bars, like on, a, on a 17 and stuff. But when it does come to like structuring, I do have, it's not like always implanted in my songs, but there are certain times that I sit down and write a song and I, I, I drop the song for like 64 bars to 80 bars, and I might break it down after that sort of time period, and then after the drop the same sort of period, but then. That's not always in force, but it is like in the back of my mind. It's there. It's almost like a formula. Like people say, "Oh, formulas they kill music," but I think it helps you to write songs quicker. And when you can write songs quicker, you get the ideas out, sort of thing. So, right when I was talking about structurings, I was talking about like arrangements and stuff, and I said I drop everything at 17. Like there are formulas to how I write music. Certain times that like, I might write a 65 beat drop, 60 to 65, sorry, 64 beat drop, and it will, um, it might happen a lot in a lot of my songs, but it's more to get the song finished quickly. Certain times I might go back and change the way it's structured, but then a lot of the time I will write things from 64 to 80 bar drops, then break it down to something else, and then move to another 64 bar to 80 bar drop again, but then if it helps me to rap songs quick, then I can't see why that's bad. I can't see why a formula might may be bad in certain situations. I constantly write in sixteens, and I'll write a drop for sixty-four to eighty because I know it works for a DJ to mix in and out of. Like I might bring in a melody after after sixty-four bars, maybe, and that's that's after I think the DJ might have come out of the mix 
or he left the song on for a bit longer so it sank more interesting after that point I'm really writing for DJs as well when it comes to arrangement big time as, as I'm a DJ myself 